Assalamu alaikum. How are you all? So we are finally here. Um, I'll invite Lutfa now. Uh, hope your day well uh, went good. And um, hope everything's fine at uh, at your end. We actually chose this time because this is a most ideal one for all of us to be online. And um, and I guess you all are aware that today's is about related to doulas and way back. So it would be nice if you show your presence by typing comments below. Assalamu alaikum, Lutfa. Wa alaikum assalam. How are you? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay, so how was your day? Um, tiring as usual. <laughs> well, Alhamdulillah. Right. Okay, and how is everything else going? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. All right, so shall we begin? Inshallah. Okay, so uh, I would like the audience to either wave or type in comments so that we know that you all are available. And we'll have the Q&A session at the end. So here's what we are going to do today. Uh, if you have seen the poster, then all of you must be aware that what our topics are and what are we covering. So what I have done is I have made these flashcards. All right. There are eight of them covering all the topics which we wrote in our posters. And when I flash oh, each one by one, uh, me and Lutfa will be discussing about it. And then at the end, if you have any questions, queries, doubts, or concerns, you write it down. And at the end, while we are at the end of our session, we'll take Q&A. All right. Uh, is that okay with everyone? We have about 18 right. viewers right so, now. Um, yes, I guess. Yeah, I guess yeah. 20, 22. It's increasing. That's nice. All right. It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so I hope uh, actually a uh, way back and doulas is like, you know, there's so much to talk about. And I hope we cover try to cover at least the most comprehensive in the most comprehensive way uh, so that it helps you guys for your labor and birth and for your decision making. So here we begin. So the first one is introduction. And I'm going to in introduce myself first, and then I'll ask Lutfa to tell us about herself. Oh, thank you so much. It's so nice to see you both online. <laughs> <laughs> we also feel honored. <laughs> I never thought, you know, we would have these many viewers, but then I'm, I'm, really, I'm really glad, actually, that it's working. So coming back, um, I am Zahra Batul. I am uh, actually an Indian by passport, but I have been born and brought up here in Saudi Arabia. And by education, I am an information technology engineer. And um, uh, I am a certified Amani birth, childbirth educator, birth doula, and NBM certified natural way back coach. I am also working in Almana, uh, General Hospital Khobar as childbirth educator, birth doula, a prenatal fitness instructor and also a wee back coach. So, yeah, that's it uh, for me right now. Lutfa, can you please tell us about yourself? Oh. Uh, I, I don't think it would be new to people. I keep telling about myself, but here, we, here I go. My name is Lutfa Khalid, Indian by passport again, but born and brought up here in Riyadh and have been here all my life, alhamdulillah. Uh, physical therapist, basically, and currently still a physical therapist, uh, certified Amani Advanced Childbirth Educator, Labor and Birth Doula, uh, Advanced Weback Doula from the Weback Link, uh, certified NLP practitioner, um, certified kinesiotaping practitioner, and uh, currently training to be a pre and postnatal fitness specialist and inshallah, a breastfeeding specialist too, inshallah. Thank you so much, Lutfa, for being here on board with us. Um, can you tell in brief about each of your certifications, for example, NLP and um, 
uh, other courses which you are undergoing right now? Right. I guess many But of us I, here want to know. Yeah, NLP is quite interesting. I found it right after I certified myself with Amani. Um, it was quite interesting to know how it works. It's it's not anything related to medicine. It's all about us. Basically, NLP is neuro linguistic programming, and okay. um, it, it is a name that compresses uh, uh, compresses three most inf influential imp you know components in uh, producing human experience or human behavior. One is neurology, uh, and then language and programming. Um, basically, uh, if if I, I see, I'm going to use a lot of medical terms. If there's anything which is not understandable, oh, yes. or which is please type in questions. comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, the neurological system it regulates how our body functions. That is neurology, and the language determines how we interface and communicate with other people, and our programming determines the kind of Uh, mo models of the world we create. So wow. basically, NLP uh, describes the fundamental dynamics between mind and language, mm -hmm. and how uh, their interplay affects our body and behavior, and that's programming. Wow! And when you incorporate this into your childbirth education classes, it must be awesome. It's it's great. It's it it is great to have uh, the certification with NLP because having known about this, we can work with a couple in depth, and uh, we make them comfortable. We kind of get them, uh, you know, on the same page, and um, somehow we have a great rapport while teaching. So it's not like a teacher and a student, and then you know I teach and then go away, they give birth and go away. We always have that kind of relationship that that somehow we are together in this. So for me, every birth, it's like mm -hmm. I give birth and I come back home. That's what my mom says. You come back as though you give birth. Wow, <laughs> wow, that's so that's so nice to hear. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And in brief about your other certifications and a profession. Uh, yeah, uh, physiotherapist. I worked for about one and a half to two years, maybe, and then I started Amani. Um, I started with Amani thinking it would be just beneficial for my pregnancy when I was pregnant with my son. But then after I gave birth, that's when it hit me. Okay, the medical part is different and uh, the physiological part of birth is different. So coming from the medical field, uh, you believe in, in different kind of things, you know, and it's all about medicine, medicine, medicine. So it was my half body was fighting. You know, one half of me was medical and one half of me was all about Amani. But after giving birth, I realized it's it's not always about medicine, and that's when I started. And since then, I haven't been practicing physiotherapy as much, and I've been all about our money. So so far, it's uh, been fifty five births, fifty six births now. Wow, mashallah, mashallah. And so I think it seemed like me that you have taken a transition in your career. From completely mm -hmm. a different field to a completely different field. So, right. how do you find it? Is it worth it? It is definitely worth it. Okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, I guess we are getting good comments and compliments from our viewers. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. And there's a lot more to discuss tonight. So I hope all of you are there till we end this session. So, Lutwa, is there anything else you would want to share, or should we move on to our next flashback? Yeah, we we'll move on with our next. Yeah, next flashback, please. All right. So the next one is into the birthing world. So basically, um, let's start from you. So, what's your story? How did you come into this birth world of doula <laughs> and natural childbirth education and Amani and so much, so much? I think it, uh, credit goes uh, to Farah, my friend Farah, and where she was the one who introduced me uh, to this group, pregnancy and childbirth group. Right after I got married, I was working in uh, National Hospital as a physical therapist, and I had issues, and I had to uh, resign from work. Uh, I think the main reason when I, I had just them, Mariam, Atifa, and Farah, these three were there with me, and I would keep telling them I believe in natural healing rather than medical healing. And uh, that was my main point for me to uh, resign from work. And that's when Farah said, I think you should read into Amani. And then I read about Amani. I register myself. I wasn't pregnant then. I didn't know anything about pregnancy. I mean, the medical part, yes. 
but uh, nothing of what Amani taught us. So I register and then I uh, wait for the workshop in Riyadh. And uh, myself, um, Mariam, Atifa, we all joined together and we have this class. And it, it was crazy fun because Aisha is having three people from the medical field and we are questioning her. And, and then she gives <laughs> yeah, and oh my God. We, we question her from the medical side and then she gives them. Aisha, okay. Okay. Uh, just to clarify, Aisha here is Aisha. Al Hajar. Um, yes. And she is the founder of Amani Bird. Right. So, all right. Continue. Um, uh, we, I get done with the workshop. I was about six to seven weeks pregnant. And uh, for me, it was uh, a learning, you know, from the beginning. So I went through the book and then I pulled my husband and then I coached him and then it came to my family. So I trained my family. So my mom, my dad, my sister, my brothers, all were on the same page. So they were all wow about this. I'm like, okay, wow. <laughs> birthing, is, <laughs> birthing is no more a private affair. It's like a family affair. <laughs> so I had all of them on the same page. And uh, that's how that's how I came into Birthing Wood and just me uh, feeling great about it and the way my family's, uh, you know, their concept about birth, being pregnant, how to be involved from the beginning till the end. That's what changed me entirely for me to see my dad being involved, to see my husband being involved. It was um, uh, life changing for me. Because wow. men are not usually involved in our culture, but uh, for me, it was Mashallah, may Allah bless them for it. But having my dad and my husband with me during my pregnancy and birth and after, that's what changed me. And that's what got me into, into Amani and birthing world, I suppose. All right. So uh, can you tell us in brief about what's Amani? <laughs> Amani is, uh, uh, <laughs> it's fun. When you, when you ask a question about what is Amani, we cannot stop talking. I think Amani is a whole new world. <laughs> Amani is a exactly. whole new world. Yeah. Basically, Amani stands for assisting mothers in active, natural, instinctive birth. And um, for me, if you ask me about what's Amani, for me, it's all about faith. It's all about uh, empowering ourselves and that heartfelt happiness, you know, that, that satisfaction you get, be it my birth or others' birth, there's some kind of faith, there's something in Amani that takes me to, you know, closer to my Lord and um, something. I, I really don't know how to catch it. I keep telling Aisha and Hajar every time I attend a birth, Aisha, there's something about this that uh, makes me go down to Sujood and, you know, say Alhamdulillah for uh, you in my life, for getting, you know, for bringing Amani in my life. I keep saying that. Wow. So this journey is taking back to which year? Uh, 2016. 2016. <laughs> yeah. All right. So anything else that you would you, like Zahra? to add? Me? Um, yes. I have a pretty interesting story. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I would like to begin from the scratch. So actually by education, I'm an information technology engineer. So mine is like a completely different, you know, technical background. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I graduated, I got married, and then I got pregnant. That's how every married woman gets. And then I realized I know nothing about a woman's biology or a mm -hmm. female sexuality. Or I know nothing about birth. Yes, mm -hmm. I knew one thing, that where my baby would come out from. <laughs> that was obvious. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess I was better than other, uh, you know, uh, I guess other, because uh, sometimes you come across some mothers who wouldn't even know who where really the baby would come know. out from. Exactly. Was, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not joking. So anyways, <laughs> I knew that much. But uh, I knew there was, you know, there was a lot to be learned. And I think there was this instinct in me which said that, uh, you know, uh, birth is, is not a medical process or that the entire experience of birth shouldn't be medicalized. And um, I just, you know, I installed apps, you know, baby center and thing, how all the mothers do. And right. then um, I reached near my due date. It was 37 weeks and the baby had caught around the neck. And um, the doctor was like, it's risky. I said, no, I don't think so. It's just a single cord. 
and she was like my, the doctor with all due respect to her she was you know older than me and she was more experienced she was a surgeon at that time i thought mm-hmm. that the best kind of experience you get would be the best surgeon in the best hospital that is known for the right. premium facilities all right so she but at the end of the day what happened was i was forced because my husband wasn't with me and i was going with my mother and mother in law and they were quite emotional and uh, the doctor didn't want to listen to me and she said to them that she didn't even address me she said to them that you know we can take her somewhere else and i wouldn't care if her baby dies it's not my responsibility because she's not listening to me and i had no choice but at the end of the day um, i felt that you know there was something missing and i needed to work on it so anyway uh, i was crying and then you know the cesarean was scheduled mm-hmm. there was mistreatment of staff the experience was bad even though it was a scheduled cesarean and i felt cheated bullied manipulated exploited i felt as if the things were spiraling out of my control and after that i went into postpartum depression it was 2015 and i had terrible issues bonding with my baby and it was very horrible and uh, then later on i thought maybe i would try for v back so i saw amani amani everywhere and then i went on and i hired a doula for my second birth and through the guidance and dedicated support of all the eastern province amani childbirth educators and doulas online mm-hmm. offline and through aisha's support i was able to have a successful way back with intact perineum with 5 days of labor and i gave birth without a single tear or a stitch and it was my first like it was the first time i went into labor so it was very surprising and i was astonished to see that how empowered i felt and that is when i realized that birth is the most vulnerable moment in any woman's life and she mm-hmm. takes it as a projection of her self worth so i realized the differences in my uh, uh, self esteem uh, between when the experience of cesarean and experience of normal world it was like two different corners of the world you know mm-hmm. uh, the way i felt uh, you know i felt cheated and you know torn apart and a lot of things taken away from me all of those feelings got back to me when i gave a successful way, like when i experienced a way back and that is what i felt that you know uh, because my experience was positive and empowering mm-hmm. i realized that now i felt empowered i felt everything was mm-hmm. in control and this is what mm-hmm. once aisha told me in her classes that you know uh birth is an empowering experience it is a transfer of control so if the woman is given that control during her birth then she would be in control of herself for the rest of her life so i think this is also one of the uh you know um i think this is also the reason that my husband says that he feels more in love with me right now because he feels me a different zahra inside of me right now and uh, i think that's interesting because you know at the end of the day it's like a uh, emergence of a completely different that's all about me <laughs> i guess uh lutfa went offline all right so what i will do right now is um I guess maybe her phone battery died or something. Okay. I'll wait for her and then um let's wait for her for 2 3 minutes. Uh till then if you guys have to say something in the comments then I am here to reply. Oh there are so many hearts and salams. Assalamu alaikum to all of you. Yes, so Lutfa is back again and I'm adding her. I'm sorry. I'm it's back okay. with Kat. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. So Lutfa, we were actually waiting for you and shall we flash your next card? 
Yeah, sure. Okay. So, what is the privilege of being in a Mani Tula? Um, I think all of us here know there are so many organizations that certify Tulas and childbirth educators and a lot of other birth professionals. By birth professional means someone who is skilled in providing services to the women when uh, du during their pregnancy or birth. So there are so many birth professionals and there are so many organizations certifying birth professionals. So uh, what do you think, Lutfa, is, you know, why being an Amani doula or a childbirth educator is a privilege? What makes you stand away from other organizations? Or what do you have I in think mind? It, it, I think it comes down to uh, the Islamic fundamentals. Uh, mm -hmm. But the, the connection you have uh, with your religion, with your God. It's um, w when I say Islamic fundamentals, so it doesn't mean, you know, if you are of any other religion, so Amani is not for you. It's, it's, it's genuinely your connection with your faith, your, your God, whatever you believe in. And that's, that's what for me is privilege uh, to be an Amani doula. So for me, I have taught um, Muslim couples and I have had that connection. I've taught non-Muslim couples, I've had that connection. I've taught atheists and they still had that connection. Okay, look, so, um, I'm sorry to interrupt you. There are some comments here asking questions. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, for those of you asking questions, I would uh, request you to write it down on the notepad so that we have a separate Q&A, uh, you know, time allotted for that at, at the, the end, end of the right. session. Okay. And mm -hmm. hi and salam to all of you again. Sorry, Lutfa. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Wa alaikum as -salam to all of uh, all of those who said assalamu alaikum and hi. We're going to get back to your questions at the end, inshallah. Okay. So? All right. So uh, back to again, uh, why Amani and the privilege? So for me, yes. Amani brings this deep connection for me with my faith in Almighty. And hmm. when I work, especially when I work, uh, I would say for me, b birth more than the classes. Yes, classes has its own, uh, you know, special connection. But for me, during a birth, the, the blessings and the prayers from that mom and their family, I would give anything for those blessings and prayers from that laboring mom. And I, come I, feel, back it's home. A, I feel it's a transcending experience. And I feel exactly. that uh, you know that you are making a difference, a positive difference in someone else's right. life. Right. I have also experienced that your own life changes, right? I mean, true, true, very true. Yeah, My husband positive. often says this. He, when I come back after birth and he's like, yeah, I'm going to have the best wife for the next two days. And then I'm back to square one. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> when I don't have birth, he's like, don't you have births coming up anytime soon? Because wow. you really need that. So, yeah, it does bring so, a change in me. I uh, come back home as a better mom, a better wife, a better person from top to bottom, inside out. So I, I would give anything, any day, uh, to be a doula, to be an Amani doula. It's, it's a huge privilege to be one. Wow. Alhamdulillah. All right. So coming to me, um, honestly, um, to begin with, it's the same as what Lutfa said. Amani Birth is the first uh, organization in the world which is based on Islamic principles. And I think it's the only organization that gives you certifications for both doula and childbirth education oh. in one workshop, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, comparatively, it is much reasonable for you because uh, you would attend one and then you can get certified for both at the same time. And the amount of support that you get from Amani instructors and the entire staff is really, you know, I, I cannot say, especially the motivating messages, which, you know, I remember uh, if you complete an assignment and you get the, uh, you know, if the crates are nice, you would get a message from Aisha or, you know, that, you know, that keep going. And another thing is, um, I think when I think about Amani, it is Gulf, you know, I mm -hmm. feel that what Aisha is doing is, it's going to be a history in the entire Gulf. And I see mm -hmm. her as the icon of bringing this birth reform in the entire uh, GCC countries. Of course, there are so many professionals mm -hmm. who are being part of it. But uh, mm -hmm. I think with 800 plus trainees from all around the world and uh, 
you know, so many of us certified and doing the job of it, I think, uh, you know, this is what makes Amani stand out. And another thing about right. Amani is that it it's more of a family. So mm-hmm. once you become part of it, you feel as if you are part of a family. And of course, the right. most inspiring icon is Aisha. What can be, I, mean, I don't think so there are words that can yeah, actually do justice to right. describe her work right. and the person she is. And the effort right. she has put in developing and in the growth of Amani birth is, they are just, you know, I think you cannot count them. <laughs> right. MashaAllah. Allahumma barik Yeah. So, shall we move on to our next flash cut? Sure. Or do you have something more to say? No, no, I think we should keep going. <laughs> All right. So, yes, coming to the important part of it, hashtag Tulas and WeBack. So, uh, we will talk about WeBack coaching and WeBack Tula. Lutfa, mm-hmm. you have recently been certified from WeBack Link as a WeBack mm-hmm. Tula. So, can you please tell us about your role as a WeBack Tula? How does it make you stand different from other Tulas? And anything or everything that, that you would want to tell about WeBack? Right. For me, um, being certified as an Amani doula and a childbirth educator was one thing, but uh, to see WeBack in person was another challenge. I did believe in WeBacks, but you know, people people say this uh, thought, until unless you feel it for yourself or you see it for yourself, you wouldn't accept it or believe it. Um, so my first, my very first WeBack uh, as a doula, it, uh, it, it was empowering beyond words. I, I would say it was euphoric. And that's uh, when I started learning more about way back. But I wanted to know fa- facts. Because when you see from the medical side, not many doctors, I would say if, if I had 100 doctors over here, just one or two would know facts about way back. And they would mislead us with the information they have. So I wanted the other side too, like just like how a coin has two sides. I wanted to know both the sides of uh, way back. And um, I've been hearing about Naturally We Back, and then I heard about uh, the We Back Link. And I registered for We Back Link. It was a pretty simple uh, certification course, everything done online. And their requirement was to attend two We Backs after uh, the, uh, the online training. And Alhamdulillah, right when I was doing the training, I had about four We Backs in the month of July. Four We Backs. And uh, mashallah, Alhamdulillah, I got certified as an advanced We Back doula immediately. Uh, what makes me uh, different from other doulas? I think the facts, uh, the medical facts about uh, uh, having a wee back. There are people who say you cannot be induced, you cannot go beyond 40 weeks. And oh, the worst part, the, the, the worst point is about uterine rupture. Everyone has the fear of just uterine rupture. And I'm surprised there are so many other complications with having a repeat C-section or Actually, with having yes. a wee back. Yes. It's not just uterine rupture. Uterine rupture is like one in hundred, I would say, and there, there are ninety nine other complications you really have to worry about, but nobody talks about them. Uh, so, well, when I got certified with this WeBack certification, the facts I learned, other than from Amani, it was kind of, you know, mind blowing, uh, especially when it came about induction part, where you know you you have a deadline for WeBack, and then. There's no other way you could wait. So people say induction is possible only for moms who either had a vaginal delivery before or first-time moms. But for wee back, induction is a complete no-no. But when you go back to research, induction is possible. There is gentle induction. There are many, many forms of it. Like it's deep, in deep. So uh, when I coach wee back couples or wee back moms, they get to know the facts. They get to question or ask and reason with their uh, care provider and um, they they actually can you know decide whether to go ahead or not. Uh, they have a pretty a good set of questionnaire you know, to ask their doctors, and it's quite you know challenging. Um, I'm not sure if the doctors know that it's me who is you know coaching them. If it if they would know, they would come back at me. What but, sort of questions? Um, I'm not going to share them with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
uh but then yeah there there are good questions and then it's good to know when the doctor's answer so the couple comes back and they tell me this is what the doctor said for me it gives uh you know that kind of satisfaction yes this doctor knows about it like he or she is clear with the facts and then he or she is not clear with the facts so, and it it's it's sad to know most doctors let me give me give you a percentage i would say about 97 percentage of doctors do not know facts about we back and it is sad it is really sad that i would say uh, i think i would say yeah i think i would say they are not updated with the international organizations exactly. guidelines by the international organizations right right so if you um and anything else that you would like to add how is uh, being a doula for a wee back client different than you know other i think other uh, other like right for me being uh, a doula for a wee back mom it needs a uh, more of emotional support more of motivation and encouragement because they have that fear no matter how much they are coached when the day comes they need it more than anyone else and um when it comes down to the emotional physical spiritual w- w- all kinds of support it's much more than a normal or, or, or a vaginal birth or a vaginal birth client or a mom mm-hmm. um you need the skills you need the patience and uh, like aisha alhaja always says we have to keep in our mind that it's not our birth we don't have room for our own emotions when it is the other mom's birth so when a mom is having a wee back when she's having her concerns and her doubts and her time and those minutes or seconds of uh whatever fear she has we shouldn't let ourselves go we should be strong for them uh, we should be um strong enough to empower them and they come out of it and then have their beautiful wee back so for this you need you need that kind of uh, information you need that kind of faith that yes it can happen and uh, you shouldn't fall for that emotion right then you can yes adula has her own emotional baggage with her but that is outside after the birth is done we come back and cry or laugh about it but inside the room it's all about the mom mm-hmm. all right and i think else that you would like to add when it comes to you being a viva tula the sort of experiences that you go through for me right for me i would say um uh having very few like maybe if i can count on my fingers i just have like a uh, uh, to- top of my head i w- i would say i just know three or four doctors that support we back over here in riyadh and having that limited option and then when it comes down to moms choosing you know care providers and hospitals to have their we back it's kind of sad and when reality hits and they're like i don't have any the option my insurance doesn't cover so and so hospital doctor so i have to go to this hospital where they don't let you know let me go beyond 38 weeks beyond that and um that kind of puts me down but at the same time when women go and have their wee back uh i would keep using the word euphoria for wee back i know yes a natural vaginal birth in itself is euphoria but for me wee back is another level of euphoria Mm-hmm. All right. So, um now I would like to talk about Weback coaching, uh the one the certification mm-hmm. which I have been uh you know, uh taken from nat- natural birthing methods and BM natural Weback. It's also an online course. Um it's more mm-hmm. about coaching and preparing the clients to be Uh, a wee back candidate if they want to and to support in their decision making process so uh basically uh this nvm coaching it includes the debriefing sessions where you sit and talk with your mm-hmm. client about you know how it's going to be and uh how was your previous experience it also includes few of the nlp techniques few of the dissociation uh, techniques wherein we help the client to dissociate from her past traumatic uh, you know mm-hmm. cesarean birth experience and it also mm-hmm. focuses more on healing and uh, coaching that and mm-hmm. uh, coming out uh, with a positive and uh, practical mindset so and when it comes to wee back coaching i think it is important for the wee back moms to understand that when they make a birth plan uh, we as a birth team 
your birth team involves you as a decision maker, your support person, your doula, and your medical care providers. So we, as a birth team, we try to give the best of the birth plan as possible. So mm -hmm. which, um, and we cannot guarantee that it would turn out that way, but all of us as a team would work towards it. So um, basically we prepare the mothers to be mentally, emotionally, and physically prepare for all the, uh, you know, scenarios, any of the, or any unexpected situation. So right. this way they have the information on both mm -hmm. the risks and benefits of VBAC and the information on risks and benefits of cesarean. So this right. way they will be in a better position to make a decision for themselves. And um, right. it also includes showing and having faith in the clients. And um, I think as a way back, like when I have attended uh, like successful way backs as a doula, I think um, it was more important for me to believe in the mother and make her realize that how much I believe in her as a doula. Right. And mm -hmm. it actually made a difference because what I realized is even if after a lot of debriefing, dissociation sessions, there's some element of the trauma if they have had bad experiences that remains in them. So when we remind mm -hmm. them in that vulnerable state that I believe in you, I have faith in you, you can do it. And they actually do it. And it turns out as a very transcending, transformative experience for them. And uh, mm. I think the unique, uh, uh, you know, interesting and unique uh, stuff about attending uh, a VBAC client as a doula, especially after witnessing them having a successful VBAC, is the transition in their personality from the weak, vulnerable, you know, a desperate self to an empowering, strong and positive self. And I think, I think that's, you know, that's what we need. And, right. and most of the mothers, when they come out with their feedback and testimonials, it comes out as strong. I felt strong. I felt motivated. Right. Yes, I felt empowered. And I felt bonded with my baby. And um, right. it, it, you can see that there is a, st a stark difference when they compare their experiences of having a negative birth experience and a positive, successful way back experience. Right. So... Yes, I think um, for the mothers here who are trying for a wee bag, it's that you should, um, I think, having uh, to uh, attend wee bag coaching sessions separately and to have a wee bag doula is as important as you go on for any childbirth education session. Right. Because right. Uh, when we add the title wee bag, we actually focus and help you prepare to have that right. experience. But at the same time, mm -hmm. we cannot say that it's going to be 100%. What we can say is that it's going to be better than before, inshallah, and we mm. are going to help you have the best of your birth plan, inshallah. So inshallah. you, with a clear, positive mindset, uh, you can definitely achieve a successful way back if you have faith and trust in yourself. And most importantly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, yeah. Mm. And I think uh, what's important is also, you know, what to expect, you know, what you're mm -hmm. uh, going to face the consequences of t choosing whether you want to have a cesarean and whether you ha want to have a wee back. So if you are already clear with this, it would be very difficult. Uh, I mean, it would be very easy for you to go through whatever experience it is. On the other hand, mm -hmm. even though that birth experience might not be as bad, but just because your mind wasn't prepared or you were not prepared emotionally, it's going to be a traumatic one for you. So how mm -hmm. you prepare yourself is important in this journey. And um, uh, yeah, it's important to have a very supportive care provider, doula or support person and uh, who can, you know, uh, gu guide her to select a proper care provider, to select a proper doula. And uh, it's obvious that you need to have realistic expectations. Yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. it. <laughs> so yeah. shall we move on to the next one? Yes. Okay. So the next one is refusal of VBAC. Uh, what do you think, <laughs> Lutfar, the common reasons for the refusal of VBAC? And what are the realities? 
you train rupture you train rupture you train rupture you train rupture and you train rupture that's all what is you train rupture <laughs> <laughs> um, does this really happen um i it, the chances are like 0.01 percentage and no uh, did you hear about... that did you hear that it's 0.01 percent which means it's exactly. as it's as likely to happen as you might hit uh, allah forbid you might hit yourself with a car on the road or you might fall on the staircase right, right and it's exactly. the same as it's the same for any mother who is uh, who did not have a previous cesarean right it's 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 crazy when that's the only point that is emphasized about uh uterine rupture and the fact that for uterine rupture there are three different kinds of uh you know facts you would you should be knowing whether you have chances for uterine rupture or not there's something called window there's something called yeah. uh, you know thin tissue there's so yeah. many other things that you can actually um uh, check or know or uh, uh, can you enlighten uh, can you enlighten us a bit just a brief in about what is a window and what is just a, you know a one one sentence would do Okay now um if i go about hold on i think i have a drawing here somewhere i should be able to find it so hold on i just drew that so that it's going to be easier to explain between each so uh, then can you introduce to us to your baby oh yeah hold on me hey guys this is the past baby me that's me. our yeah those are our props actually the ones which we use <laughs> from childbirthgraphics.com and we as birth professionals use in our classes hey what's its name lutfa that's a her it's layana oh Hello. it's a her she's so <laughs> cute she's so cute just like you <laughs> all right oh i can so, see the pelvis uh, i can also see the placenta yeah that's the pleasant uh, that's the oh that's empower birth empower birth when you the... think about empower it so it's fine in my head so yeah empower birth <laughs> all right so yeah coming back to um the uterine window or dehiscens or um or i'm just going to explain what is uterine rupture versus uterine window yeah. and what is uterine dehiscens now basically um when you when you talk about uterine window it's about how the uterus stretches and how it can become thin and in order to know if there is a uterine window a cesarean would need to be performed or an ultrasound may show the thinning so there is no way you can know whether there is a window or there is thinning unless you open it did you get it or for the viewers can you repeat it once again lutfa a cesarean would need to be performed or an ultrasound either of this it may show the thinning if there is a uterine window so you cannot just guess or give a percentage or you might have so and so chances of uterine rupture or uterine thinning um only a provider she or he would be able to tell during the cesarean because of how thin it would look and evidence has not shown thus far if a uterine window is an indication that a rupture would more be would be more likely or not so you can have a uterine window and yet not have a uterine rupture that's that's so, the the fact yeah. everyone should know yeah is that clear <laughs> for the viewers some interesting and, the, uh, you know discoveries tonight huh yes right. and then coming talking about uterine uh, dehiscence there are three layers to the uterus and this is something i uh, i came to know after i went in detail about we back we so back if the yeah. uterine yeah if the uterine scar opens partially stretching the scar tissue and opening the bottom layer did you get the drawing slotfa i guess you um, were going to show us yeah but i didn't get the drawing right i think oh, i right. my son yeah, misplaced sure. it oh sure all right so i'm okay, just no keep problem. talking about yeah. yeah so if the uterine scar opens partially stretching the scar tissue and opening the bottom layer this would have been a classified as a uterine dehiscence i'm going to re- repeat again if mm-hmm. the uterine scar opens partially stretching the scar tissue and opening the bottom layer so i'm talking about three uterine layers over here so opening the bottom layer this would be classified as uterine dehiscence and it is often harmless and it doesn't have any harmful effects on the baby or the mother 
So window is one, dehiscence is one, and even if both, you have chances for both. Let's say you did an ultrasound, a very yeah. uh, sophisticated ultrasound, and they find you have a uterine window or you have uterine dehiscence, it's still okay to go ahead and have a wee back. Yeah. That's basically a difference between rupture, that is completely rupturing, you know, of all three layers. Window where you can see through and dehiscence is basically stretching of one layer and opening of the second layer. And it's 0.01 percent, by the way. Exactly. Okay. And so, coming back to the reasons for refusal of VBAC, you try and rupture number one. What are the others? Um, doctors, supportive doctors. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry to all the OB guys over there. I don't hate you. I love you. We need you. But. Um, yeah, one point of supportive doctors for VBAC are doctors who know who are updated with VBAC uh, facts and knowledge and research or hospitals and policies that allow oh, VBAC. Oh, yeah, and... please don't remind me about that. <laughs> it, it comes down to policies where they don't have a written policy. If you actually ask for their written policy, they don't have one. It's all verbal. Hmm. It's all verbal. Interesting. Interesting. And that's the second reason. Third reason. Oh, big baby. I forgot about that. 3.5 kg, you, you tell have us a big a... baby. 3.5 is big. Zahra, there's, there, there's no baby that can be 3.5. Oh, my God, it's big. You have to have a C-section. That baby cannot come through your pelvis. Your pelvis is small. Your pelvis is narrow. That's why you had a previous C-section. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Like, how can one determine that the pelvis that was Unless, you know, that was created by someone. And why would you uh, think, you know, uh, why would you think, uh, I mean, why would you think they would state these reasons? Just for the audience to understand that. Um, state reasons. Now, I'm coming from the medical field. So I would, my first point, you know, it's, it's the fear, the management, business, and time factor, uh, patience, failure to be patient. Um, I could keep going FTP. on and on and on, but yeah, <laughs> uh, I think basically that, um, I mean, the five from top of my head, that's what they would keep, you know, pushing you away from having a wee back. And uh, the, the 40 weeks, the due date, exactly. For somehow, for many, due date is like an expiry date. Just like how you keep your almarai milk and you see six and you don't use it beyond six. So for them, due date, due date, khalas, you cannot go beyond that. You're expired. Safrullah again. And due date is, by the way, just an estimation. Guesstimation. So it's guessing and estimation. Guesstimation. Guesstimation. We have this <laughs> guesstimation, viewers. Right. right. So due date is nothing but guesstimation. Exactly. And, and what else are the reasons? I'm, I'm trying to think. What else are the reasons they say? Oh, um, not having support from family. Or let's say support from the husband. We'll like start or, from the husband yeah, and then go down pressure. to the family. Yeah, yeah being right. under pressure for choosing something which you don't want for yourself or which is otherwise exactly. your thought process or what you have decided. Right. It all comes down to them blaming the mom. So, see, if something happens to you or your, your baby, it's all on you. So, um, I, you know, you, you have to choose this or that. So when you're in, you know, under that kind of pressure, especially when you're about 38 to 42 weeks, you go crazy thinking what worse can happen to you. You, you don't, um, you're not in the right mind state or you're not in the right hormonal state to actually think for yourself what is right, what is wrong. You somehow come down, you know, and come down to the pressure from family. Yeah, uh, I think uh, to add, um, you know, to add your list of reasons for refusal to be back, I think uh, w- what we can add is fear of litigation and uh, convenience factor, as you said, failure right. to being patient. So if, you know, if the medical care provider has to go on a holiday. Right. And Tina so, just wrote a point. We often uh, hear, why do you want to try for labor when it might end up in C-section again? Better to schedule it anyway. That's one. Yeah, and so the okay. second line, what doctors say is, why go through all that pain when C-section? So, and then you think... Yeah, but on the other right. hand, the risks of uh, cesarean are like... 
nobody or, talks yeah. about that. Yeah, nobody talks about that. Right. Uh, I think one of the reasons is also trivialization of cesareans. True. Uh, because uh, it is easy. It is you know um, you know it can be done on your convenient time. And right. uh, I think um, so a few other reasons may also be lack of confidence by the medical care providers in their skills or mm -hmm. in themselves. Right. I'm going to show a quick table. I'm not sure how clear it is going to be. We back versus repeat C-section. I hope it's clear. I will put this in the comments after we are done with the uh, video. But yeah. um, if you would see this uterine rupture in we back, and repeat C-section uh, uterine yeah. rupture. So in VBAC, you have just a 0.4% chance. That is one in 250. This is in case if you're having a VBAC. Check out uterine rupture in case of a repeat C-section. It is 4.3%. That is one in 23 women when you're having a second C-section. And 7.5%, 5, 7 one in 13 if you're having a third C-section. Nobody talks about uterine rupture when you have a repeat C-section. They only talk about uterine rupture in a way back. Why is that yes. so? Did you get it? <laughs> I'm asking the viewers. So, yeah. I mean, so much there's new, right? I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> that how we, how we play with ourselves and hypocrisy at its, at its best. So, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, what are the common uh, reasons usually, um, you know, for the first cesareans? What do you think? I mean, I think it's again failure to progress. But, and big baby. Yeah, but I would say Reach. failure to progress. I would say lack of knowledge. When you go in, in, in your, into a, your labor room in ignorance, without knowing what to expect, what, what, what are the facts, what are not facts. And if you're not prepared well, how, how labor is going to be and what to do when you are in labor, all of that just lack of knowledge and um you know not having that kind of trust in your body in in in, in your uh, almighty creation just that itself is the biggest reason you know to just have a c-section without knowing why did it go wrong but apart from that i would say yes yeah. like you said failure to uh, progress doula maria from riyadh has commented medical interventions yeah Oh, Definitely. yes, medical interventions. There are questions again coming up for those viewers who are writing questions in the comments box. We are going to take questions separately at the end of the session. We have two more flashcards to go. So mm -hmm. please write down all your questions on your notepad and then we will take it one by one, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. So shall we move on to the next flashcard? Yeah, go ahead. Way back moms. What do you have to say, Lutfa, to the moms who are trying for way back? Prepare yourself. Go get the knowledge. Um, go take anti you know, antinatal classes from a way back specialist. Way back oh, coaching, yes. Exactly. And better yeah, to have you... a doula who's had experience with way back clients. Right, exactly. So they know what to expect, how to guide you, how to keep motivating you. They know the facts. They know the difference. Uh, um, you know the difference between a normal vaginal birth or you know a previous C-section. Uh, they're going to guide you. You would have questions of you know why do I go to classes? Why a doula? I I can get all the information from internet. Let me say internet again is not the best place to get all information. You have this. Uh, I guess that. someone had asked me a question a few days back. Uh, I want to be a childbirth educator, but I think mm -hmm. I can get the information from the internet and present it to my clients. So why do I need to get certified? How would you answer that, Lutfa? Um, no, <laughs> no, no, um, if that the was amount the of information which we learn and the amount of hard work and efforts which we put to get certified cannot be compared mm -hmm. to just using the internet and then giving that information to right. the people. Exactly. Okay. True. I think sadly, um, it's sadly, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, sad, but uh, the truth is that no, you cannot be qualified to be a CBE or a doula like that, especially in today's world, because if you do that, there are more chances of you getting sued because of the lack of information you would have. So it is better to be, instead of being jack of all and master of none, it is better that you choose a field and then go on it realistically. 
right right exactly if that was the case zahra i think i am not sure if atifa and maryam is watching this live video but they would you know uh add on to the fact what yeah. i'm going to say yeah they are doctors have, yeah both of them are doctors by the way maryam lahaji is uh, and they are from eastern atifa. province and they are uh, certified amani trainees yeah yeah uh i think both are certified amani childbirth educators i'm not sure but Childers, yeah both of them yeah. are certified yeah and um coming from the medical field all three of us thought yes we know everything and anything about uh, you know birth and pregnancy and all of that but after taking amani after going through all that workshop and training and then you know getting experience from teaching and eating every birth how is it different for us then we we spent 5 to 6 years in medical school and come out yeah. to be a certified doctor and uh, get to find the yeah. difference Dr Atifa has written uh, the comment saying that's like saying i needn't get a course in pharmacy for instance i can just <laughs> read about drugs over the internet this can be said about any studies yeah that's oh. nice thank you atifa for being part of our discussion tonight right so uh, no online information is is not the go to uh, maria is also for... commenting yeah <laughs> right so basically uh, for we back moms who are trying for we back go get you know enroll yourself for antenatal classes with a we back coach uh, hire a doula who has experience with we back or who is certified as a we back doula or who has information on we back like facts and not just from here and there um get your husband on board that's very very important if it's just you who's on board for we back it's going to be difficult so you definitely need your husband on board read 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 is what i would say apart from attending coaching sessions and classes from we back professionals it's better that you read research papers or guidelines on comprehensive guides or books that would give you the information on different updated guidelines by different organizations such as mm. national institute of health acog american college of obstetrics and gynecology arcog and many more mm-hmm. right exactly so uh, are there any books that would that you would recommend lotfa for the we back moms here or those who are trying for a we back or would want to read the material i would say I would say Amani is a great start. Yeah. And and then um uh, the the we back link from the organization I got certified as a doula they have a pa- parenting guide too. So we have a certification for doulas and they have another uh teaching material or uh, for students for moms or for couples who are trying for a we back. It's a great start from there. And I have another favorite book. Let me get it. So let me turn it for you. I love this book. I don't know why. <laughs> Can you tell me the name and the author Lutfa for the audience who's here? The Mama Natural Week by Week Guide to Pregnancy and Childbirth. The author is okay, I'm bad at spelling this, but it looks like Jenny Weave Howland with Cynthia Mason and Mora Winkler. <laughs> Oh thank you. There's yeah it's, there's <laughs> comment by Maria I, I like it's really in, interesting and she's written that my dad's words always for academic studies you pay so much and prepare why not for birth birth changes you how can you not prepare you are bringing a life into this world how can you just stumble through it without knowledge and i guess uh, she had mentioned uh, like two two days back quote from her father that there are three things that you should be prepared for birth Death and anything uh, uh, else. Uh, I don't remember. I'm not able to recollect. Sorry. So yeah, the point here is. Oh my God! I love the expression. <laughs> it was. It was actually an interesting <laughs> point, and I it, it just fell out of my head. The point here is that it is uh, just like how you prepare for your life and death and your graduate examinations. It's important for you to prepare for. your birth as well yeah I, it was marriage in between birth life and <laughs> um, uh, birth marriage and death <laughs> mashallah that's nice <laughs> all right uh, so is there anything else that you would like to add yeah marriage is written marriage regarding um, what would you say to the mums trying for we back here you can do this inshallah you can definitely do this and it's it's not about it's of course about how you give birth and how that's going to change but it's all about you tried and uh, you were you know informed you took decisions for yourself and you did all you could 
basically i shall have just quote tie your camel you tied your camel so well so well that you don't have regrets on how it's going to end up so whether you have a v back or whether you have a repeat c section whatever the experience is you definitely you're going to be content in a better way yes exactly. and you will be content right you'll be yeah. content i've had happy months and- Right. I've had moms who had a repeat C-section, like they would go try for a way back, but either medical reasons or medical interventions or lack of support, be it any reason, and they go on to have a repeat C-section, but they still come out content. And they say, my experience with my second C-section was way better than the first because I was informed, I tried, I bonded better with the baby, and I I'm, I don't have depression. I'm I'm really cool about it. So it's it's not about... having a way back and not having a way back or being you know successful or being a failure it's it's not success and it's not failure when it comes to giving it's content no matter it's how. a yeah exactly it's a content it's a gratitude the experience of uh, you know the experience and the feeling that you have done your best right exactly it's it's all about yeah, you how given, you feel yeah. it's, it's it's a feel how you feel Okay. Now what I would like to add to Lutfa's um you know points on we back moms is I think there are two things that you need to uh, have first is information and support. Now that information can come through childbirth education classes, we back coaching and attending healing sessions. It also includes writing down and discussing your birth plan with your medical care providers and also non-medical birth professionals such as your doulas and childbirth educators. It also includes um preparing yourself mentally, physically, emotionally and being an eternal mm. optimist. That's very important. And the second thing is support. Now this support is from your medical care provider from the hospitals. It is very important to know that the hospitals and medical care providers that you choose play the most and the big important role in the kind of experience you are going to have when it comes to your birth if the hospital has higher rates of cesarean even if the doctor is supportive most likely by the end of your due date the doctor is going to be pressurized by the hospital policies so right. to to go for the best paid is to go for the Sweeback so supportive care provider and a Weback supportive hospital or a hospital is that is known for uh, the good rates of normal births or good rates of Weback okay and the second thing is family now coming to the family it is very important for you to understand that uh, you need to share the information or be around people or ha- have them around your birth only when you feel safe and secure in their presence if there are people in the family whom you do not feel safe and secure then they better be out of your list and it is very important for your experience because one negative comment from the wrong person it's going to spoil the entire thing right am i right rutva you are absolutely right and the second thing is uh, consider why you are making this decision so is it because of the postnatal recovery is it because uh, that you want to bond greater with your baby that you're going for the way back it is because you want to experience that um, you know and have control of your uh, you know uh the events birthing events and you know a uh, feel and prove that you are capable of birthing or is it because of chest risks and benefits or both we back and cesarean so this is very important for you to know so what you can do is to write down and try to understand and comprehend that why do you want to go for we back okay and the second thing is to consider the emotional impact or emotional and psychological repercussions that are going to be you know there when you do a decision making whether it is a we back or cesarean because as i said earlier the experience may not be that bad to us but just because you weren't prepared for it physically emotionally and mental- mentally it may be traumatic for you i guess we have lost lutfa once again um so i would like I, i'll just continue and, and then we may wait for her for one or two minutes until she joins back and another thing that is important for the we back moms is to understand that when the doctors talk about risk what risks are they talking about it is the risk of uterine rupture 
or is it the risk of a failed attempt for we back? This is important for you to know. And you will know this through discussions and questions. We are getting invite from Lutfa. All right, Lutfa is joining us once again. Hello, Lutfa, welcome Sorry. back. <laughs> I'm bad with gadgets, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Looks like the contractions are going up and down, up and down. <laughs> You're being a perfect they doula. To <laughs> All right. So, Lutfa, I was uh, telling the audience over here that uh, it is also important to understand what risk is when it comes to your medical right. care providers, when they talk about risks. So is it really the risk of uterine rupture or is it the risk of factors that affect the VBAC success or is it yeah. actually the risk of the litigations which they may face? Mm -hmm. So this is very yeah. important for you to consider. So that's yeah. it for we back moms. Now, what about we back dads? Support your wife <laughs> and go search um, for the best you know doctor who would support we back and the best hospital. Do not make it all about you. It's about her and the baby. Go support your wives. You or and your be family along with her. Yeah. Do not make it about you or your family or your parents' expectations or your siblings' expectations. It is her birth. Respect her space. Respect her privacy. Understand that she is going to give birth to her baby. Exactly. There, there's no room for family or friends or um, um, your personal life over here. It's, it's about... Your wife, she's carrying your baby. And if she wants to go give it a try for way back, like she wants to go have a chance for a TOLAC, TOLAC is basically a trial of labor after C-section. And then just be on the same page and support her. It's, it, it doesn't come down to pressurizing her, you or the baby. Like, do not ask your wife, do you want to be there for the baby? Or do you want to go, I mean, you know, die? Or It's, it's all, you're, you're questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. I would what you should say. actually, yeah, what to add to it, what you should actually be questioning is, is it okay with you if that person is in the labor room? Right? Right. Because yeah. forcing someone from the family or relatives when she is not comfortable or where she does not want to, uh, you know, uh, make them part of her space, personal space and privacy, and you're forcing it on her just because you cannot stand up for her is a bad thing. And it, it shows uh, how, you know, what kind of a kawam you are for your lady, right? Right, exactly. So, um, and what else would you like to add? I would say as much as we keep telling we back moms to, you know, go take antenatal in the natal classes, prep yourself, have all the knowledge. I would say the same thing to the dad too, because he equally has to be informed and needs the knowledge and, you know, needs, you know, need, need all the empowering we have it for the moms. The same thing for the dad, because he went through what she went through for the first time too. Moms get to talk about it, share with her friends how she experienced all of that. But men do not share what he went through inside a labor room. And that's always there inside them. So we need to um, open space for the men to talk about their feelings, their experience, uh, how did they feel about their first birth or second section or third section and all of that and let them get it, you know, the fear, fear release technique, it's not just for the mom, it's for the dads too. And basically get them on the same page uh, empower them as much as you empower the mom and then yeah basically that knowledge yeah get empowered give all the support you can and um don't make it about the finance do not yeah. make it about the finance please not about the finance uh, it will if, come if on its way this, exactly its if you invest in this if you invest in this it's a it's about investing in a new life it's about investing in your wife's health in your child's health it it will come back to you in some other way. Just yes, like how it will, your risk definitely. is written for you. Exactly. Just like how risk is written for you. That risk is going to come back if it is there for you. If it is meant to go, it would go away. So do not make this about finance. 
Yes. Yes, perfect. Uh, I would like to add that create a supportive environment for her mentally, mm-hmm. physically, and emotionally. Validate her emotions. If she's crying, you do not say don't cry. You say it's okay. I am there with you in this journey. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> because men tend to rationalize emotions, and I think that is what the biggest mistake they make when the woman is in her most vulnerable phase. So emotional validation, number one, is very important. Uh, right. And not reasoning her emotions because she is feeling the way she is feeling because of the changes happening in her body. And um, second thing is create a supportive environment from your family members. They need to learn to respect your choice as a couple based on your own mutual discussion, understanding, and decision making. It shouldn't be the way that they are trying to control him and, you know, the mother is controlled by her family. It shouldn't be that way. We have lost Lutfa again. I think she might join again. So second thing is ask people to respect your decision. And the last would be be the guard for her decisions. Be there to respect her and, uh, you know, uh, support her decision making and respect her birthing and private space. Okay, Maria is um, writing interesting comments. She's also a doula and childbirth educator in Riyadh. Men can throw money and buy new gadgets, siphon, etc., but cringe to pay for childbirth classes. Why? Get your priorities straight. And Umama is from Hyderabad. She's also a back coach and a doula. She's writing, that's the reason he needs to be informed and be supportive throughout her pregnancy. Maya has also written, I think forcing a husband if he's not ready to join in a labor room is not really good. He might not be really supportive or just listen to the doctor and wife ends up feeling husband is against her. I think it comes to more about uh, what the couple has decided based on their mutual discussion and understanding. So if the wife is okay with husband not being around, it's perfectly fine. But um, it's okay, Lutfa, we are waiting for you. I'm adding you back. Yes, Lutfa. So uh, let's myself. come to an end. Is there anything else you would want to add? It's okay. Um, Is there anything no. else you would want to add? Or we would go to our Q&A. We'll go for a Q&A. If any other points we, we remember after we've ended this session, we'll just add up to the comments. So whoever watching it later, because this video yeah. will be safe. So I guess uh, we'll take first five questions yeah. to manage time. Yeah, sure. We'll take first five questions. And if you guys have got uh, like a more questions, then obviously me and Lutfa are here in the group anytime. You can private messages or comment below the video. Also, inshallah, I would come up with a poll tomorrow regarding our today's live session. And me and Lutfa also have an interesting thing to share that both of us would be presenting our a uh, paper on the doulas and midwives bridging the gaps at annual general meeting by Saudi midwifery group in Riyadh. So it would be good if we have audience uh, to listen to us. All right, Lutfa? <laughs> 24th November. Yeah, 24th November. November. Yeah, obviously we would be sharing that, inshallah. So, mm-hmm. so we are waiting for your questions. Any questions here? So by the time we get questions, Maria's comment, yeah, I know, but some husbands are strictly against the classes or in for birth, but the wife is very interested to try. I would definitely say, Maria, get them for intro classes. You know, childbirth educators and doulas are definitely, you know, they're on and on about uh, intro classes. Get them for those intro classes and trust me, they yes. change. Husbands are running questions. to me no. before the wives. All right. True. Uh, um, would you want to complete the sentence? Did I interrupt in between? Or should we start taking no, the no, questions? No, no, no. Yeah, take the questions. First question from Felisa. Uh, how, yes. How did you avoid episiotomy and how to deal with postpartum depression after natural but medicated birth? Lutfa, here you go. How to avoid, uh, how did you avoid ep- episiotomy? I think that question is for you because you mentioned intact perineum for your VBAC. Oh, yes. See, there are many things that, uh, uh, there are many ways 
that you have to consider when it comes to episiotomy. First, get yourself informed and get the facts right. Why is episiotomy necessary and how it can be avoided? What are the risks? Okay, what are the benefits and when it should be necessary? Secondly, prepare your body and especially your perineum. This can be done with kegels, perineal massages and nutrition. It is very important for you to have three things for your journey of birth. First is nutrition, second is exercise and third is the support and information. So eat mm -hmm. right, healthy, well-balanced diet uh, and do prenatal uh, exercises that will help to make your perineal muscles flexible. Now, mm -hmm. coming towards the support, perineal support, it's very important for you to have the right person to give you proper support while you're pushing and you are in a proper position, then everything will go fine. And it's, uh, uh, it's good that you go for slow pushing rather than you know, uh, go for chest breathing and tear yourself apart. So this is also mm -hmm. the reason why you need to practice more on birth breathing or belly breathing or abdominal breathing. So because if you don't get the hang of abdominal breathing, it is difficult for you during your labor when you have less time in between contractions and while you're pushing. Uh, the second question, mm -hmm. how to deal with postpartum depression after natural but medicated birth? Lutfa, would you like to add something here? I would say you need to talk to someone who knows uh, uh, what happened with you. Like you need to reach out. Maybe Adula again because she would know uh, what, what, you know, what, are, what were the medical interventions. And you need to talk out. You need to reach out to some professionals and then um, just let it go by just talking it about and get the facts right. Uh, and then when you get your facts right, when you know what, what went was wrong or right, you need to make peace with it and say alhamdulillah and there's always a next time if there's a next time for you and i would like to add depression. yes uh, i would like to add that first it is important for you to know what are the different kinds of postnatal or perinatal disorders so this way if you are educated and if you show some symptoms you will know that you need help and to get that help you need to go to someone who's professional qualified and certified to deal with your case second thing mm -hmm. is i would suggest that have a social gathering uh, try mm -hmm. to have a positive mindset and be in nature for at least 10 to 20 minutes because it studies have shown that being in nature for at least 10 to 20 minutes have uh, you know leads to reduced levels of depression and they were you know uh, the rates of depression dropping down so over to you right. lutfa um, I would say this, I'm, my son is almost three years old, but uh, no matter uh, whether I'm in the postpartum period or not, but having a social uh, circle, having friends just to share, just to talk, just to meet and have a cup of tea or coffee or for those who do not have a cup of tea or coffee, you could have just water or any juice or drinks. It makes you feel better, just makes you feel better, uh, be it depression be it um, sickness, be it uh, just not feeling yourself, just meeting a friend, uh, have, just getting that tight hug and just that touch, that makes you feel better. So definitely go out and reach out. Uh, what's the normal uterine thickness and how much is really thin or risky? Normal uterine thickness? I wouldn't say we uh, would call normal uterine thickness no matter how thin it is, you never know if that thin or, you know, the measurement of how thin yeah. the doctor is telling you is dangerous or not dangerous. Uh, ideally, according to the guidelines, it should be not less than 2.5 mm. Two. All right. 2.5 mm. Uh, right. Between 2.5 to 2.8 mm is fine. And I think that based on that is what they consider, they consider you as a qualified VBAC candidate. Now, when it comes right. to you, you have to make a decision. Are you ready to take the risk of having a window or a uterine rupture or dehiscence, right? And then how much is really thin or risky? As I said, 2.5 to 2.8 mm. Now, uh, if you remember, Lutfa has already explained to you three scenarios of uterine rupture and she has already given information on window. So I think uh, I'll save this video, inshallah. So if you guys watch from the beginning, you would get an idea of uh, how sometimes 
you know, even if it is thin, you are out of the risk of that uterine rupture. So, but it, I think it does come under silent rupture. Yeah. Exactly. But ideally, it wouldn't need any medical help. But again, are you ready to take that risk is your question. Any hope right. for VBAC2? Yes, is it yes, possible yes. for VBA3C? Yes. Have a supportive medical care provider. So the same things get repeated. Go for the hospital that have highest rates of normal birth or VBACs and all of what we have said. Same for VBA2C and VBA3C. Now, when it comes to Saudi Arabia, most of the hospital policies here do not allow VBA2C. Yeah. <laughs> so now, where would you be giving birth is your decision and something which you and your you know, partner needs to consider. Is it possible we back yeah. after three reason, three year reason for first C-section CPD? Can you throw some light on CPD, Lutfa? CPD, what is CPD? I need this answer in the comments. What is CPD? Anyone, quick answer. Nobody's quick enough. I don't see any comments. Cephalopelvic disproportion. Now, how do you diagnose one woman with CPD? That's the yes, question. Yes, interesting. Yes, how do you diagnose it? What did your doctor say? We do are we have doctors? Dr. Atifa, Dr. Mariam, are you guys still I there? Think I think they left. We are late. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we are having answers now. Yeah, All right. right. Three, two quick reasons. How will you diagnose CPD? There is Number no one. way that you can <laughs> diagnose CPD when you're pregnant. Like, no way. Okay. And, uh, there, there's one way to take an MRI and an X-ray when go, you're pregnant. Yes. When you're pregnant and you have an X-ray or MRI, this is how you would know. If there's no X-ray, no MRI, you wouldn't know unless you go into labor and your baby stuck while you are pushing. Right, exactly. Or the okay. only, I mean, I would say if you go back to your history, if you had rickets or let's say a case of polio or maybe um, vitamin D deficiency and it was really bad and you need to, you need so to maybe have you may, it yeah, treated. Consider all right. Or let's so, say a traumatic uh, accident or anything of that sort. Let, let's say you had an accident, you had a surgery, and it was in the hip area or the pelvic area. All these, yes, CPD. You could you could go towards CPD and go for the testing. Otherwise, MRI, CT, or an X-ray is definitely needed to say that you are a true case of CPD, which okay, you would definitely not last... go for X-ray or CT. Yeah. This is the last question which I would be taking. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm asking one more question. I request you to please consider how postpartum massage is helpful for mothers to deal with physical and mental stress. How likely you recommend it? Uh, coming to me, I would say that if she is really a certified, okay, masseuse or somebody who's specialized in uh, acupressure, acupuncture or reflexology and somebody who's certified, qualified, I'm not talking about traditional masseuse, but I wouldn't say they are bad, but because it is important that you know who you are dealing with and they, what, whatever they are doing is correct and evidence-based and they are informed about the consequences of it, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so now it's up to you to find such specialists, right? Now, uh, is it helpful for mothers to deal with physical and mental stress? Now, it depends on what kind of massage are you having. Are you going for reflexology? Are you going for acupressure or acupuncture? Then, yes, it depends on that. Uh, if they are from certified and skilled professionals, of course. Of course, it would help you physically and mentally. Uh, anything else you would like to add, Lutfa? It comes down to uh, even cultural um, traditions. There are many culture and tradition that follows uh, postpartum massage, postpartum herbal medication, postpartum um, home remedies. But the question is, are you really sure about it? Have you um, researched on it? Have you asked questions? Have you, um, uh, you know, have you asked yourself whether you really need it or not? It all comes down to that. Massage is great. Reflexology is great. Acupressure is great. Acupuncture is great. I totally love all of them. I would have it any day, any time. 
but getting it from the right person that, that, that's that's your you know go to uh, question or that's your go to thing to consider and uh, does it help with stress and uh, postpartum depression and all of that it could it may uh, one thing about postpartum depression that i i wanted to mention before but i couldn't do not brush away postpartum depression by saying all you have to do is pray uh, uh, you know uh, do istighfar or you know get closer to your lord yes you have to but do not brush away postpartum depression with religion it is a medical condition it is a condition that needs professional uh, check up professional advice professional diagnosis professional treatment professional reach out um so yeah take ppd postpartum depression seriously not lightly yeah um uh, do you think we should wrap up now i think so it's quite late i don't know what the time is oh it's way over it's 11:31 yeah <laughs> <laughs> we plan for right, one hour uh, guys before... we're sorry <laughs> yeah so if you have any questions or comments you can drop in this thread or you can message to us personally or use the hashtag doulas we back and tag our names inshallah and i would be coming up with a poll uh within uh you know tomorrow or day after tomorrow uh, one thing uh, i would like to share is this book birthing normally after a cesarean or two so if you are we back mom or someone uh, who's trying for a we back it's a good and great read because it has all the guidelines from different international organizations and uh, you have the data when it comes to risks actual risks associated to uterine rupture or risks associated to failure of we back so i think this is all i have to say for tonight and anything else you would like to add lutfa i would say um we back or let's say just birthing is a huge topic um talking about it for an hour doesn't do justice at all we could go on and on about informing you and you know giving you the right information giving you right evidences and research um it it takes a lot of time to dig into and then to know know it all being childbirth educators and doulas with experience me and zehra would say we still have lots to learn and lots to know we are not like 100% age with information and knowledge we, we are still learning and we have to learn till the end till our death but uh, that that's how it is when it comes to with it, you know with advanced yeah. knowledge and research we're having, we're having so, prayers and comments so i mean to all the doulas <laughs> i mean i mean So see you all soon, inshallah. Uh, with the poll, inshallah, if there are more requests, maybe we could come up uh, with different topics like this. If there is request and interest, if not, like Zahra said, you can reach out, write comments under this video. We might be notified or tag us in post, and inshallah, we can uh, answer your questions, inshallah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Lutfa, for being Thank part you, of the session, and it was fun with you. <laughs> <laughs> I see my reflection in Lutfa. You know, I see myself in her. So, uh, for those of you who are in Riyadh, we would be looking forward to have you at annual general meeting on twenty fourth November. Inshallah, me and Lutfa will be sharing the post soon. So, yes, Inshallah. be our audience there, and uh, I hope all of you who are pregnant over here are looking forward for a positive birth experience. May Allah give you. the kind of birth experience that you're looking for and the last mm. but not least that i would say is keep praying and exactly. you know the dua the times of the dua that would be accepted yes it does make a difference so have faith in yourself have so first of all have faith in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have faith in yourself try hard and inshallah you know you will see the fruits soon inshallah That's it. Okay. Bye. That's it. Bye. Lanaya or <laughs> no, Layana? I, I forgot. Layana. <laughs> Layana. Bye bye Layana. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm ending it now. Wa alaikum assalam.